Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are in not so glamorous Kingston upon Thames in a travel lodge. Things have gone drastically downhill since last week, but you know, you have to do what you have to do. This week, we are talking about client and project etiquette. Let's do this, darlings. What do we mean when we talk about client and project etiquette? Well, we should be good at our job. You know, we've gone out and got qualifications. We've done the right training in the right areas. And hopefully we also understand that there's some aspects of a job or a project that maybe we don't understand and that we're going to collaborate on or we're going to use certain services to be able to qualify and install that part of the project. So if you are looking at doing a project and you are wanted to work in the high end of residential and commercial, I think three key things that are fundamental to every job that we've done and feedback we've got are one turn up on time you know it sounds silly but um, give yourself 20 minutes leeway to turn up on time to a project and if you've given a time to a client then make sure that you are there at that time and that you stay to the permitted time that you said you're going to stay to um, if not over and above if the job needs to get over the line um, we constantly get feedback from our clients that say, that, that say, especially in central London, that they're surprised that we've turned up not just on time but early. Um, so it's, it's one thing that really sets you apart if you turn up on time. Number two would be that um, you are polite and courteous to the client. So ask them about their day, ask them what their weekend looks like, you know, ask them to use the toilet. <laughs> You know, ask them if you're allowed to use the toilet. Um, you know, I think those level of courtesies and that level of um, the ability to talk to a client really sets you apart. If they are comfortable within your home, then you will get more work. And that definitely is something that we, as a business, have um, learned to teach our engineers so that they feel comfortable speaking to clients and that you know especially with certain clients um, if you get new engineers in explain to them what the first names are what the last names are how they like to be you know how they like to be spoken to what you know what they would like to be referred as um, those, kind of, those kind of things so when the engineer goes in there he's not going to off put the client on your brand because he's been so used to being you know dealing with you or dealing with one of your engineers that's been there for however many years so the etiquette side of things is something that you can kind of teach along the way if you've built up a rapport with clients over the last I don't know two three four five years make sure you teach some of those kind of little findings that you've had like certain clients like you to turn up on time or sort of like to turn up early some of your clients like you to leave at a certain time if you teach those to your engineers, then they will naturally transfer over to the client. So the client will always feel comfortable that there's a new engineer on that site. So number two is always to you um, is etiquette. I would say you know it's a good one to have. And number three is keep tidy. Is that there's nothing worse than a dirty tradesman, and I will not allow you to use the excuse of you know we didn't price for tidying up after ourselves or we didn't you know we didn't have time to do it or we didn't have you know or it was a dirty site I don't care set yourself apart always tidy up your site always tidy up other people's messes and don't go around telling people that you've tidied up so and so's mess and da 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 just leave the site how you would leave your own home if you didn't work on your own home you know it will it will change the dynamic of your business in higher end residential. Clients want you to come in and when they come into the house, they want it to look, um, if not as tidy, tidier than when you started. So in the past and certain projects, we've had cleaning companies come in and follow us afterwards, um, which really makes a dramatic uh, difference when it comes to the you know the handover side of things you know you've seen me in the in the in the past do um our handover kind of bundles or presents and things like that with champagne and all the rest of it but the cleaning side of it, it i would not even get to that point if i hadn't have cleaned up along the way and presented them with a clean and tidy house um, and i think that's something that certainly resonates 
along when we've used subcontractors in the past and we've used, we've seen other install companies being on site is like leaving piles of dust in places or you know or literally just leaving their rubbish on site have you asked the client if it's okay to leave rubbish on site you know that's down to your due diligence and if you haven't put that in your contract that you've said that you're leaving um, rubbish on site then you should be taking it home it's your responsibility to get rid of it so it's my bugbear as well um, if you stay tidy on site and you really excel on keeping a tidy site then clients will always use you because there's so many dirty ones out there so the three tips for Thursday are be on time be polite and curtis. be tidy easy as that done dusted